Thomas Tompier's smallest striking and quarter repeating uh, clock extant is the miniature ebony case silver mounted table clock number 222 made by the master clockmaker at the height of his abilities for Queen Mary and King William in 1693. The dial plate is only 79 by 85 millimeters or just over three by three and a quarter inches. This royal clock was sold by Bonhams for just under two million pounds in 2019. The smallest spring clocks in Tompion's normal production is exemplified by this small ebony spring clock, number 457, made in about 1707, known as the Points Tompion, after this little clock was sold by Sotheby's for 240 pounds in 1941 for the late Reverend Ponce of Dorchester Abbey in Oxfordshire. The dial plate is 120 by 146 millimeters or four and three quarter by five and three quarter inches and signed here at the top, Thomas Tompion and Edward Banger London in this attractive surrounding floral scroll. Many clocks signed by Tompion and Banger have a silver plaque with Tompion's name alone covering up the original signature. Some even have a rectangular slot in the dial plate removing and banger section of the original signature. Over 300 years later, at least, this little gem has been spared that personal occasion of their feud. Why exactly the two partners fell out so spectacularly has unfortunately been lost in the mists of time. These little Tompion Phase II spring clocks are often sentimentally linked to Walt Disney with the Mickey Mouse ears by the subsidiary dials. The one on the three side for the strike silent to stop the clock at night and the nine side for the pendulum regulation adjustment. Even with approximately two and a half to one reduction in the lever arm ratio, these regulation dials are frustratingly difficult to adjust with loss motion and backlash between the suspension arm and the dial pinion. If you're ever trying to use such a dial, I recommend you always approach a new setting by first lowering the pendulum and then raising it up and any backlash in the raising of the lever to a new setting. All Thomas Tompion's mature production of spring clocks morph into similar proportions, though it is as difficult to tell the actual size of an individual Tompion from a photograph. This clock is such a pleasing small clock in Tompion's mature phase two production to grace any bedside table or drawing room. Let's have a look at some of this little clock's details. The front door here is surrounded with the two matching pair of scutcheons, the one with the keyhole on this side and then on the top the mount to allow the sound to come out of the clock and hinged on the three side here and then you can see the little subsidiary two dials the one on the nine side here to lift the pendulum up and down and here you've got the strike silent uh, lever here to switch off the striking at night if you had it in your bedroom and a lovely false pendulum with a lovely edges um, so beautifully made and shaped and then the very very attractive hands they're absolutely Tompion's best aren't they absolutely beautiful and then the um, lovely spandrels in the corner these part mounts to fill in the spacing below the subsidiary dials and like all Tompion's production at this stage um, to make sure at each clock all the parts um, were made individually and you can actually see the case has been stamped uh, 457, 457 twice um, on the bottom sill here. And on the top here this lovely little knob handle uh, tied with the corn coming through the inside trunnion mountings after 300 years I wouldn't 
trust it to lift the clock, but isn't it beautiful? Of course, this little clock is a quarter of Peter, and so that if I'm pulling, wondering what the time is, dark on a winter's evening, I can pull it. Quarter past. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one blow on the quarter, that's quarter past, and then 10 bells, just gone quarter past 10. Wouldn't that be a lovely little clock in your bedroom? So the back door is hinged on the uh, nine side of the clock, um, and you can see the most fabulous engraving. The Pendulum has a lock here onto the back plate, and now it's going here. And then you've got these two cross over levers, so you can pull the repeat from either side here. You can hear it click as it cocks the lever, and then as I let go, it'll give you the nearest quarter of an hour. Quarter past. Quarter past nine. You can see the suspension here is pivoted from this point and the spring then goes through these cheeks and then the, um, you have the crutch coming down to operate the pallets on the escape wheel. And you've got this lever arm which gives about two and a half to one, but the rack and the pinion inside here um, are fairly uh, coarse and so that you get a lost motion if you're not careful. It's very, very frustrating trying to adjust the timekeeping. You always want to lower the pendulum down and then raise it back up again so that it will uh, take up the backlash each time to the same uh, extent. But the Engraving on the back here is absolutely spendiferous. The, the detail, the, the ladies, the half lionesses, and uh, all the beautiful scrolling flowers are just beautiful engraving, absolutely beautiful. So what more could you say about a little clock apart from, would you like to have this one in your bedroom? <laughs>